You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. Good morning, Tennessee Valley. This is the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison here with my co-host, David Story. On the line, we have two nurses from a hospital that just unionized in Pennsylvania uh, talking to us about um, uh, about unionizing their hospital. So, uh, like we said, y'all have won your union election. Y'all are officially federally recognized as a union at St. Mary's Hospital and you're in negotiations right now for your first contract. Can you tell us how that's going? Um, you know, do y'all have representatives from your hospital sitting at the table? Are you, how are you um, getting what the major concerns are from the nurses? Are y'all sending out surveys? Just to walk us through what the negotiation process looks like. What does it, yeah, just walk us through that. Joe? Yeah, so first we started out with surveys, like you said. The surveys were sent out to every nurse in every department, and those surveys tell us what the nurses' needs are, what their concerns are, what their hopes are, what their dreams are. So we said, you know, just tell me all about your experience and what you need to do your job ex- excellently, not just well or, you know, maybe even mediocre, but excellent. So then we collate those, and we get together. Uh, we didn't even actually yet um, uh, elect leadership team but all of us really work with such amazing synergy there's probably 20 of us now working together and we get that information and then we sit down um probably three or four times a month with our hospital administration who they pick um to do the negotiations and trinity has sent a negotiator to be kind of lead on that TASNAP, our union representatives they sit with us and instruct us um, and teach us and educate us on the whole process what it looks like so we 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 go with these needs the staffing grids um all these different articles in our contract we've been uh, really blessed to have a contract with a sister hospital that we wanted to adopt most of that but then tweak it a little bit more for our area so we've taken the contract and we've used it and then we've um, added to it to st mary's so that it has more of a st mary flavor to it too and then we sit down and then we arbitrate it. That, and, you know, so I have worked non-union jobs and I know people that have worked non-union jobs. And just the thought that you and your coworkers get to write and democratically bargain on what your employment contract is. I mean, that's just so cool for uh for me it like i i think that is just amazing and i know a lot of people would love the opportunity to help i mean literally y'all are helping draft the language that y'all will be working under that's i think that's so cool um so other than so american yeah right (laughs) right that's that's exactly right it's incredibly american to to be able to have that independence and say you know um what what you think you deserve and to be able to bargain for it um other than oh yeah i mean to me that's the beauty of it i mean unions are the one of the last ways that affords a common man to be able to step up and face the corporate america to level the playing field Mm -hmm. that's how i look at it because if we didn't unionize and, and group together you know, they would pick us off one by one or two by two. But when you join together as a large coalition like we have, they come and sit at the table with you. Right. And they didn't delay us getting to the table by very long. We won in August, and I think we had our first bargaining session, I think, in the middle part October. of October. Yes. <clears throat> then the holidays came, and we are almost ready to finish our contract back on March 12th. But then, you know, the, the COVID crisis hit mm-hmm. us up here, and we have just been so darn inundated. Things are lightening up here that we're going to be going actually this Thursday, the 18th, we're actually going to have a virtual bargaining session with the hospital again. You know, what's, what's always strange to me is we bargain and we have a contract for our mortgages saying what the mortgage company is responsible for, what we're responsible for, the same way with 
auto loans the same way with uh, if you rent a house there's always a contract tied to it and yet so many people in america don't recognize the, their ability to bargain collectively over their working conditions it's it's like you said it's Amer it's, it's truly american as apple pie but uh the, employers have convinced everybody they can they can just come in by themselves and do it one-on-one -on -one. correct and that's why they bring the union busters in to try and reinforce that mm -hmm. and it gets very very scary because along the way you think you're going to get fired you think this is going to happen and like i said earlier you know the more you're out front with wanting to unionize it gives you a whole set of protections that most people and us included you know we had no idea, and that's where the, the people from PASNAP gave us the courage, the ability, and the information to know what our rights were. But those union busters are very good at what they do, but we stood up to them, and we beat them, and it was a great thing. Right. So other than negotiations, now that you're officially unionized, can you talk to us about how the committees are coming together and the people at the hospital, the nurses, are working together in solidarity? Like, have you, have you, have you done anything else outside of negotiations? Talk about the vigil, Joe. Yeah, we've done things uh, to bring back the character of St. Mary Medical Center that has been taken away from us. So with this whole COVID mess, we had uh, 92 patients of ours die pretty horrifically and so we wanted to mark this and have a little prayer vigil for these 92 people of our community and then we had several nurses who got very very sick with COVID and so we had them come and give testimony during the prayer vigil and so we have we've had our local politicians there prior to that we had our local politicians stand with us as well um, so we're in communication on a almost daily basis with one another uh, so, like, what are we going to do next? What's going to happen that we can make our community aware that we're here to stay and we're here for your sake, for the safety of you, our community, and <clears throat> for the betterment of our working conditions? So the prayer vigil was a really big deal that we had. And we even invited management. And our management team did come, and they thought it was beautiful. And then at one point, they sent out a little email saying, thanks for coming to our prayer vigil meeting it was their idea and they did well just laughed and said yeah that's what they have to do they have to take credit for everything that we're doing now but um that's what we've done but what what i've seen is the coalition coalescing is that the right word of all the nurses coming together where before we might even look at each other smear or whatever now we're coming together and we're starting to honor and respect and there's a culture of honor that's being developed instead of the blame and shame culture that trinity tried to uh, impose on us Right. That, that, yeah, when you, when y'all were telling me about that, um, before we, um, before we brought y'all on, uh, this weekend. So, um, that that's really important i think uh we're coming up on a break and i know uh, we we said we only wanted to bring you on for uh three segments but y'all have a just a really really interesting dynamic and i'd like to kind of flesh that out in it on the other side of this break do y'all have time for one more segment Sure. Okay. So, so just to kind of let the audience in, we we alluded to it at the beginning, but um, Joe is a self-described um, right winger, a constitutionalist, a Christian conservative type person, and Bill is uh, like an ultra liberal type person, and they, but they, uh, they're able to go above. Th their political differences and recognize that they are brothers and they're brothers and sisters with their co-workers and they have more in common than they have that divides them and so they're able to work together and they're passionate about the union together and they're um and, and so that's i i want to give them a chance to to flesh that out on the other side of this break so uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be talking about that on the other side. This is the Valley Labor Report.
Thanks for listening, folks. If you want to keep up with us throughout the week, you can follow us online. We've got a Facebook page, facebook.com slash Valley Labor Report. You can search us on YouTube at The Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore AL. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist, R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. If you appreciate our work and want to ensure that we can stay on the air, consider supporting us with a monthly donation on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Valley Labor Report. 